Hey everyone, I'm Asha Nixa and in today's video we'll be going over the uh, coding part corresponding to the bisection method. The function for which uh, we'll find roots would be f of x is equal to x3 minus x minus 1. If we plot this function, we'll see that it has a root at about 1.3. So we know there's a root between 1 and 2 and we'll try to numerically find this uh, root uh, using the bisection method. In the bisection method, uh, if you've seen the uh, video corresponding to the theoretical part, uh, we'll have to basically uh, take care of three things. The first thing would be x of left, the second thing would be x of right, and the third thing would be x of middle, which is obviously uh, the average of x of left and x of right. So basically, if uh, we assume that this is the initial point for x of left, so this is the initial one, and this is the initial one for x of right, and if we take a look at the function again, it looks something like this. So uh, we basically have to say that, all right, so uh, let's make a table. All right, so uh, it would be something like this. We tell Python, hey, just uh, bear in mind that x of right is 2, and bear in mind that x of left is 1, their average x of middle is 1.5. And based upon uh, basically the sign changes, uh, x of right could become 1.5. So let's say uh, we have a, a sign change here. So this is the first uh, half interval. So x of right would become 1.5 x of left would still be 1 and x of middle is 1.25 and if we let's say bisect this interval again x of right would remain 1.5 and this would be uh, yes 1.25 and then this would be the average of these two so basically uh, we have to take care of three things x of right x of middle and x of left these are the things that we need to take care of and uh, so let me write that down so we have to save three variables or basically store them store three variables we have to know the value of function f at each of these variables each of these variables so we have to make sure that we're able to calculate f at x left, x right, x middle. And the third thing would be basically deciding which half interval we should go to. Go to. Uh, so, if you've seen the video uh, about the theoretical part, we basically have to bisect the intervals. And uh, if we have a sign change in either of these intervals, let's say uh, f is negative here and f is positive here, then the selected uh, interval would be this one. And then we bisect this interval again. So, let me put it here. So, let's say we've zoomed in and we'll bisect it. So let's say now f is positive here and f is uh, negative. No, it's supposed to be positive here. Let's just say this one is negative. So as a result, the roots would be in this interval. And uh, so basically we have to choose this interval. So we have to basically think of uh, a conditional statement which would allow us to decide upon which half interval we should go to. Uh, so yep, these are the main uh, three steps, so let's go through each of them. So at first we'll create a file, let's call it solver.pyo, it seems that I had right. 
so solver dot pi and uh, as for solver dot pi uh, we have to know a few things so the first one would be x of left so let's say its initial value would be one and we have to know x of right so its initial value would be two so we put the initial values corresponding to the uh, starting and end points of an interval in which we are kind of sure that there would be a root. So in this graph, we know that there would be roots between 1 and 2. So their initial values would be 1 and 2. So we have x of left 1, x of right 2. And we also have to know uh, their average. So let's say x of middle, which is equal to x of left plus x of right divided by 2. Now, uh, we have to do this a lot, so it wouldn't make sense to write this down again and again and again. So instead, let's just define a function. Uh, we'll call it average. Average of two numbers. So let's say first number and second number. This function would return uh, their average, which would be first number plus second number divided by 2. So instead of writing this down, we'll just say, hey, the average function, please calculate the average of x of left and x of right. So let us run that. Right. So let's say we want to see what the value of x of middle is. So this is 1.5, as we might have expected. So yeah, so uh, this was the first step. The second step is uh, having f at, uh, basically being able to calculate f at each of these values. So let's define another function. We'll call it f of x. f of x will return x to the power of 3 minus x minus 1. This is basically our function. So let's say if you want to know the value of f at x left, you'll see that it would be minus 1. So yeah, uh, this is the second step. And as for the third step, we have to decide which half interval we should go to. So as I said, we should look for uh, sign changes. So basically, what we have to do is that, let's say, uh, let's call Let's call this A. A would be f at x left. B would be f at x middle. So, and yep, uh, these are just the only ones that we need. So we multiply A by B and we'll check its sign. So if it is positive or uh, equal to zero, then it would mean that a and B. They are both uh, bigger than zero or but either way they have the same sign. So if they have the same sign that would mean that uh, we probably wouldn't have a root here. So we'll have to choose the second interval. So yeah if a multiplied by b is bigger than 0, then we choose the second half interval. So let me reiterate that. This is our function. This is, let's say, x left. This is x middle. Uh, this is value of f at x middle, which is b. And this is a. So we, need, we see that both are positive. So a multiplied by b would be bigger than or equal to 0. Uh, so, sorry, uh, would be equal to 0, uh, uh, would be greater than or equal to 0, so there wouldn't be a root here. So it has to be between x middle and x right. So we have to choose the second half interval. But if it is negative, that would mean that they have different signs. So in that case, that would mean that we necessarily have a root between x of left and x of middle. So we'll choose the first half interval. All 
right? So, uh, but what do we mean? What do we mean by choosing an interval? So, if we choose the second half interval, it would be something like this. Well, this is just the first one, the first half interval. Let's say this is our initial interval. This is x left. This is x right, and this is x middle. So we'll basically uh, do a change of values to the variables that we have. So if this becomes our interval, then x of middle, uh, I'm sorry, x of right would become x of middle. So this is the new x of right. It would be reassigned the value of x of middle. And x of left would be, remain x of left. And xm would be their average. But if we choose the second half interval, then uh, x of middle would, uh, I'm sorry, x of left would become x of middle. So the new value for x of left would be the previous one for x of middle. And x of right would remain x of right. And x of middle would be trivially the average. So let us try to code that down. Uh, let's say uh, we want to do this uh, process for 100 times. So n would be equal to 100. So we would have a for loop. So uh, we basically have to go through uh, this process many times, let's say 100 times. So in order to achieve that, we'll have to use a for loop. So we'll tell the for loop to repeat itself 100 times. So, and at each iteration, we'll have to check the value at uh, x of left. So, we'll call it value at x left. Value of x left would be x left, f of x left. And value at x middle, let us calculate the uh, middle value here as well. So, this would be x middle would be equal to the average of x left and x right. So uh, f of x middle would be f at x middle. And now we'll check their product. So we'll call product is equal to value at x left multiplied by value at x middle. And if the product is greater than or equal to zero, then uh, let's, let's just uh, take care of the other uh, basically scenario first instead of the greater than or equal to zero scenario. So if product is smaller than zero, uh, then we'll have to choose the first interval. So that would mean x of left would be uh, equal to x of left. So that would remain as before. And x of right would be equal to x of middle. Uh, so yeah, this is redundant, so we could just remove that. And else, which would mean that if the product is greater than or equal to zero, x of left would become x middle, and x right would remain x right, but of course this is redundant, so we wouldn't put that here. So yeah, and at the start of uh, the next iteration, we'll we'll recalculate x of middle. Of course, we could have put put it here and put x middle again here. But a shorter way would be to just recalculate uh, the x of middle at the start of each iteration. It doesn't make much of a difference. It's just a matter of having shorter code. So yeah. So now let us try and see what x of left and x of right would be. So this would be x left. Let us print x left, x right. So basically, uh, Python would do this experiment, so to speak, a hundred times, and then it will print x of left and x of, x of right. So it would basically give us the interval in which there is a root. So let us run the code. Uh, so we have an error. 
line one. That's kind of weird. Yeah. So yeah. So this is uh, the starting point for the interval, and this is the end point for the interval. We'll see that it pretty much is the root. It's very close to the root. So what should we report as the value of the root? A great approximation for the value of the root would be the middle point between x of left and x of right. So we'll say root is equal to average of x left and x right. And then just we'll print our root. Which gives us this value. Which is pretty much the same value that we got uh, from this graphical calculator. Yep. So yeah, uh, this is basically the bisection method uh, as seen in the Python code. So uh, basically we defined uh, three important variables x of left, x of right and x of middle and we checked uh, their values or basically uh, their f's or basically the value of f at each of these x's and we checked uh, their sign differences so if they changed a sign at the first interval then we chose the first interval and if they changed their signs at the second interval then we chose uh, the second interval and then after doing this uh, for a predetermined number of times which was 100 in our case uh, we took the average of uh, the starting point for the final interval and the end point for the final interval and we basically took that as an, as an approximation for our root and then we printed our root which greatly reflected or closely reflected the value that we had expected the root to be. So yep, uh, this is uh, the code for the bisection method. Of course you could have uh, written the code in a much uh, cleaner way but for the sake of brevity, we wouldn't go over how you might have made the code uh, cleaner. But uh, we'll leave it this, uh, linked uh, in the description to the uh, GitHub repository in which you could see a much cleaner version of this code. So, yep, uh, that's it for today's video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, coding part. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know in the comment section. and. We hope you have a nice day. Bye.